Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Tuesday, January 30th, 2018. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah, maybe a little lulls. Today's show is titled, Don't Say It's a Trade War. You can get show notes at isheadlines.com. On this show, trade wars, Russia fails, Chipotle fails, Fitbit Secrets, and more. And now, here is your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. EU threatens trade war with U.S. So after Donald Trump's first round of tariffs with promises of additional rounds coming, the EU is threatening a retaliation. So, and, I, and we, I think we covered this last week, the thing that they said wouldn't happen, a trade war seems more likely now. And this is from SCMP.com, Europe to Trump. If you want a trade war, you'll get one. All right. The EU fired the shot across the USS bow after Trump said in an interview with UK television station ITV that he has a lot of problems with the European Union. This may morph into something very big, very big indeed, from a, from a trade standpoint, he said. The alert by the European Commission also follows Trump's decision last week to impose tariffs on U.S. imports of solar panels and washing machines on the basis of rarely used safeguard rules. It also comes amid a continuing threat by Washington to curb American purchases of foreign steel and aluminum on national security grounds. The European Union stands ready to react swiftly and appropriately and in case our exports are affected by any restrictive trade measures from the United States. Margariti Shinas, chief spokesman of the commission, said, well, told reporters, whatever. He declined to elaborate, saying his, his, his point is this better understood if I don't. Next story. Russia goes all in with Turkey against Rojava. With many people seeing what's happening in Afrin, and Afrin's a part of Rojava, a lot of folks are now asking, what the heck are the Russians doing? Uh, why are the Russians seeming to help the, the Turks invade Afrin and assault the Syrian Kurds? And an article in Al Jazeera gives a pragmatic assessment of why Russia would allow the Turks to invade Afrin, again, which is part of Rahava. And if, if you go to iState.tv regularly, you'll know that Rahava is a region that I am regularly following as they endeavor to explore the possibilities of statelessness that that's what they're trying to figure out there and turkey is 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 harsh in my mellow i'll just say that but the assessment highlights a point that i make regularly uh regarding coercive enterprises and that is that the coercive enterprises are a business and the business is coercive enterprising and their competition is other coercive enterprises. So what you're going to find is they're going to do whatever it takes to get an advantage over other coercive enterprises. So after, after they determine what it is that they have to do that will be in their best interest, that will put them in the best power advantage, then they'll attempt to develop a moral justification to satisfy their populace as to why they chose to do what they did, whether it's in this case countenancing the attempted genocide of Syrian Kurds in Africa and in Afrin by 
I'm calling them the Turk Reich right now because they're ticking me off that bad. So now they're the Turk Reich. Or supporting strongmen that regularly execute their own citizens for daring to not like them. And that's, that's something that multiple course of enterprises have done throughout the ages, including the United States. So the Russians aren't really siding with the Turks so much as they're finding that uh, allowing the Turks to have their way with Afrin offers them far more benefits than telling them not to invade Afrin. And, and if you go to isheadlines.com, you can get the show notes here. I also have the show notes in the Facebook description, the YouTube description. And if you're listening to the audio, you're, you're in the show notes. So <laughs> there you go. So uh, you can read exactly what the reasons are, but the point is the Russians have very pragmatic reasons for doing what they're doing. It's, it's not based on any kind of external morality other than their own benefit. Chipotle shows limits of AI and research, research marketing. Now, this story, actually, we're going to be featuring this later tonight on Is Daily Tuesday, which you can watch on the Liberty Principle Facebook page at 9 p.m. And Bodhi Agora will be on with me. And this is going to start off our on, I Ponder segment where we're going to we're going to talk about science. I'll just leave it at that. But for now... Uh, I, I've been involved in the news business off and on since 2003, and uh, which I, I started an online publication called Freedom Through Autonomous Living, and since then I've run various online, and, and, and I've even run a, a couple of newspapers. And the one thing that I have learned in that business is this. If you ask the public what kind of news they really want, and I've done it. I, I've actually done it, and I've actually followed through to try to give them what they want. They're going to lie to you. Now, now they're not intentionally lying to you. They're really lying to themselves. And what they tell you they want is what they think they should want. So they think they want positive news stories, and what they really want is sensationalism and drama. And it seems that Chipotle hasn't learned this lesson, nor did the AI. They had assessed feedback from customers through social media. The AI told Chipotle that the customers wanted fresh ingredients, no preservatives. So Chipotle built that product, and the customers wholly rejected it. And the title of the article that we're excerpting from is from Forbes, and it's called How Artificial Intelligence Realized Chipotle's Worst Queso scenario, and I invite you to go to his headlines and, and read that actual article. But the upshot of it is the AI uh, gave them advice based on interpreting what people wanted through social media, and it turned out not to be exactly what they wanted, even though they said that's what they wanted. Is your Fitbit exposing classified military secrets? Signs point to yes. In a news item that is sure to inspire the lulls for some of us and holy mother of hell's terror in others, it has been revealed that commonly available garden variety fitness trackers were exposing top secret U.S. military bases. Now, as you might imagine, the U.S. military is looking to change some things, <laughs> some things to stop uh, fitness trackers from exposing their secret network of clandestine war, war bases. Yeah, and that and that definitely deserves a lull. And this is from Washington Post. U.S. military revising its rules after fitness trackers expose sensitive data. The U.S. military said uh, yesterday that it's uh, adjusting guidelines for the use of all wireless and technological devices on military facilities amid revelations that fitness trackers can be used to expose the identities of individuals working in sensitive and hazardous locations. The review came after reports in the Washington Post and elsewhere that a global heat map posted online by the fitness tracking company Strava reveals the outline. <laughs> of U.S. military bases in some of the most dangerous locations of the world. It's not funny, Paul. Stop laughing. It's not funny. Not funny at all. Along with the routes taken by supply convoys and patrols. Who are the at wizards who came up with this? That's, wow. Anyway, 
they're gonna have to make a few changes, and I'm I'm sure everything will be just fine, folks. They'll they'll continue to hide their clandestine bases, and they won't be exposed by Fitbits in the near future. Will Pujimon appear in Catalan Parliament today? So today, and I, I imagine it may, it may already have happened, and uh, if it did, I'm bet y'all be reporting on it tomorrow but today promises to be an interesting day in barcelona as we will learn whether carle pojamon the exiled ex-president will make a surprise appearance at parliaments to stand for re-election this is from independent uk uh catalonia's fugitive ex-president uh, i i prefer exiled exiled not fugitive exiled Exiled ex-president Carle Puigdemont asked the region's parliament on Monday to guarantee his right to attend a session this week in which he hopes to be re-elected government leader without being arrested. Spain's constitutional court ruled on Saturday that Puigdemont, uh, well, basically that he must be president in parliament to be chosen chosen as uh, as as the president Dennis. again. But a Spanish ju Spanish judge has ordered Puigdemont's arrest on possible rebellion and sedition charges if he re-enters Spain. And then the uh, his lawyer hinted Monday uh, that uh, he did not rule out Mr. Pujamon's attendance. So we'll see if that actually happens or not. And if it doesn't happen, will the parliament go ahead and vote for him anyway? He is the only candidate listed. FCC chair rejects White House idea of nationalizing 5G network. Well, good for you. Good for you, Ajit. The White House is hinting at nationalizing a 5G network is not being met favorably by a key player, the current FCC chair, Ajit Pai, who came out against the move. And this is from Engadget. FCC chairman opposes proposed government-run F5G network. It turns out former Verizon lawyer turned FCC chairman. Yeah, that, that's the way it works in, in the regulation business. All the regulators are former top-ranking business folks. That's, that's, that's the way it works. It's, yeah, I know in Gadget that you have a leftist tendency, and now suddenly you have a problem with the regulation nation that your ideology actually created. So shut up and uh, yeah, put away your faux outrage because your only outrage is that <laughs> the, 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 the goons are targeting the wrong people. You don't have a problem with goons. You just have a problem with the goons targeting the, quote, wrong people. But anyway, it turns out former Verizon lawyer turned FCC chairman Ajit Pai's loyalties reside not with the president, but surprise with the telecom industry. R Pai has come out against the proposed government-run 5G network that's been floating around lower levels of the Trump camp. In a statement this morning, Pai said... I oppose any proposal for the federal government to build and operate a nationwide 5G network. The main lesson to draw from the wireless sector's development over the past three decades, including American leadership in 4G, is that the market, not government, is best positioned to drive innovation and investment. I'm not going to read any more, but duh. I'm, I'm, I'm only gathering from this that the tool that wrote this article for Engadget actually favors a national a nationalized 5G network. So don't complain about regulation nation when you need it to make your little commie dreams come true. VA House considers bill allowing ads to be sold on school buses. This is a joy. This <laughs> I love this story. This is not made up by the way, folks. This is not parody. If you ever doubted that government is essentially a money-making business, hopefully this news item might help you end that doubt. So clearly the writer, Justin Mattingly, of the news report we're highlighting from, sees no problem with the government trying to come up with creative ways to generate revenue. Generate revenue. You just take that in. 
This is the phraseology that they use. He even refers to the idea of selling advertising space on school buses to raise revenue for public schools as creative and leaves unchallenged one lawmaker describing the potential move as being, quote, outside the box revenue stream. And the story is from the Richmond Times. And you can hear the way that this, this gentleman writes this article. He's, he's fully involved in state of state base uh, utopia land. Advertising on school buses? House Education Committee approves bill to do just that. A creative way to improve school funding has made it out of committee. A creative way. Okay, I'm not going to go on anymore. I just want, I just want, to, I just want to point this out about what's happening here. So the government is going to get in the business of selling advertising. This is going to happen at the local level. It's going to have to be the local school districts are going to sell bus space on um, advertising space on their buses. This means that they're going to, well, they're going to have to have an, uh, an ad department. They're going to have to hire ad sales people. They're going to have to create a whole branch of government to sell and manage ads. And uh, what are they going to do? They're going to go to the business and say, you know, you know, you know, you want to buy an ad. You want to buy an ad. You know, we, we, we've got, we've got those zoning people. We've got those inspectors, you know, maybe you want to buy an ad. So yeah, the businesses, they're going to make the, the pure free market decision to advertise on the buses. And what does that mean? What does that mean for other businesses selling advertising? That means it's going to be harder for them to actually get ad revenue from other businesses because businesses don't have an infinite ad budget. So the government is basically proposing competing directly head on with the free market so that it can feed a system that it is designed to create another generation of gov bots. Good move. Good move. Bitcoin on trial in New York and all crypto with it. So two federal cases in New York state could determine the fate of of Bitcoin. It could open up Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to being hit with the same regulations that affect stocks and bonds, or it could shut down that regulation gateway. So a major court case will decide whether Bitcoin can be regulated like stocks and bonds. This is from a time. Federal judges in Brooklyn, New York, are about to rule on the question. In, so, in doing so, they could determine whether Bitcoin and other stateless, stateless, oh, I love that phraseology. Uh, you just take that in. You know what? If you're watching it, let me just make sure I, I'm going to highlight that because that's, that's a beautiful thing. There we go. If you're, if you're listening on audio, you don't see the video, but what I've done is I've highlighted the phrase stateless currencies are securities that can be regulated like stocks or bonds. Courts across the country are likely to consult these rulings when considering other cryptocurrency cases. I wanna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the one story and make sure I get to this one. I got to get to your lulls. Got to have a lull story in all this. Gaydar is real, says Stanford researcher. That's right. I said it. Don't, don't, don't shoot the messenger. Okay, this isn't me. I'm not advocating for Gaydar. I'm just saying that there is a Stanford researcher who has determined that Gaydar is real. Did someone actually create a working Gaydar? A device that could ter- determine if someone is gay? Yes. Uh, Michael Kozinski. He's the guy. He's claiming that very thing. This psychologist, this is from, where are you from? Fox, Fox.com. Two minutes. This psychologist gaydar research makes us uncomfortable. That's the point. In September, Stanford researcher Michael Kozinski published a reprint of a paper that made an outlandish claim. The profile pictures we upload to social media and dating websites can be used to predict our sexual orientation. Kaczynski, a Polish psychologist who studies human behavior from the footprints we leave online, has a track record of eyebrow-raising results in 2013. Okay, blah, blah. 
He he Facebook likes could determine your char personal characteristics. For the new paper, Kozinski built a program with his co-author Yilun Wang using a common artificial intelligence program to scan more than 30,000 photo uploads to an unnamed dating, dating site. The software's job to figure out a pattern about what could be distinguish what could distinguish a gay person's face from a straight person's face. And they picked it 81% uh, of the time for one gay minute. men and 71% of the time for women. We got one minute left. So a uh, couple of headlines we didn't get to here. Russian jets buzz U.S. over Black Sea. And just a little reference there. There's the, if you're watching or if you're listening on audio, you're missing the video, uh, the, the, the map. I, I encourage you to Google the Black Sea map and see where Russia is and see where the Black Sea is and see where the U.S. is. It's not on the map, by the way. Uh, so just seconds. just a little perspective there. I'll leave it at that. Gov borrowing to hit eight year high. That's right. U.S. Treasury says government borrowing will hit eight year high. Some of the other headlines we missed real quick here. South Dakota legislator batters its own state co battles its own state college over free speech rights. HUD to undo Ten some seconds. manufacturing housing regs. Turk Reich strikes Syrian Kurd strongholds with air bombardments. South Korean cryptocurrency exchanges self-regulating. Facebook's privacy center first step to get ahead of Europe's anti-social regs. And that's it. We've come to an end. As you can see, the clock has run out on the show so that's all we have for today for headlines you may have missed if you're watching on facebook taste stay tuned i may have a couple more moments to note things to say after the show's over if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for january 30th 2018 as always remember those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, Have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.